Hi everyone, it's Sarah in Nome, Alaska, and today we're going winter camping by dog sled. I hope you enjoy the trip. Camping is always really fun and it's even more fun with dogs, but there's a lot of preparation that needs to come first before you can get out there. Just a warning, my kids might sound a little funny in this next clip because I've sped up the video so we can go through it quickly. Our packing list for a camping trip is pretty extensive. So we've got harnesses, gangway, foodies, sleds and sled bags, sled bags, snow hooks, dog kibble, dog snacks, dog supplements, dog food cooker, bucket and ladle, drop line, snow sticks, poop shovels. And then for the people, there's food, pocket knife, lighter, first aid kit, camp stove, bowls, sports and cups, thermos, sunglasses, goggles, arctic oven stove, wood stove and wood, sleeping bags and pads, extra clothes and socks, hats, gloves, mittens, scarves, parkas, puppy jackets, sweaters, snow pants, extra boots, toiletries, snow shovel, axe, skis and ski poles, snowshoes, snow machine, and freight sled. I'm sure I missed something. Okay, it's me, back to normal. We drove about 45 minutes into the mountains, and when we got there, we unloaded the dog sleds and the snow machine, and got the dogs harnessed and ready to go. We just started out, we're gonna do a river crossing, so Keen is making sure it's safe before we cross. crossing and we're heading off to um, the valley that we're going to be going up, going over this little path. said alone we can do so little together we can do so much and I really believe that being out with my dogs and working together in a team is one of the most rewarding things I've ever done just being in the mountains listening to the sled runners glide over the snow it's a pretty special experience When I was a kid, if you would have told me that I would end up living in Nome, Alaska, running dogs, I would have been completely head over heels. This is, has always been my dream and I feel really lucky to be sharing that with my kids. Yummy. On this trip, we were really blessed with beautiful weather, but it's always good to be prepared. We carry emergency supplies, including a Garmin inReach, which allows us to send text messages or press an SOS button if we really needed help. We also bring a first aid kit in case we have any injuries on the trail, human or dog related. Um, and even if we're not planning on camping, we bring a sleeping bag just in case we get stuck somewhere and have to get warm. In this case, we were planning on going out overnight, so we had an arctic oven tent with a wood stove and wood so that we could dry out our gear and stay warm. The dogs get straw at night, and so they make a little bed for themselves. On this trip, it was nice to have snow machine support. It allowed us to bring more gear than we could normally with just nine dogs on the trip. 
But our goal next year is to go on some trips only powered by dogs. On this trip we were planning to go about 35 miles, so we split that up and did half the first day and half the second day. Alright, so we just arrived at camp and we're unharnessing the dogs. First thing we do is take their tuck lines off. <laughs> so that they know it's break time. Thank you, Connie. Good boy. We unharness them, and they can have a nice nap. We'll give them a good snack pretty soon. Keen's getting the tent ready, and we'll all get to have dinner and have good sleep, and then start over again tomorrow. All right, we gave all the dogs their salmon snacks, and now we're just setting up the tent. We found this nice bare patch of tundra here. All right, we've got an Arctic oven and this is our wood stove and the wood stove goes in here and um, gets set up on this ground pad so it doesn't burn through the floor. And then you put the stove pipe up through the roof and we've got a bunch of wood that we hauled in and we'll be nice and cozy. All right, so this is our, our cooker. We're melting snow in it to make water so that we can add it to dog food, keep them hydrated. And we've got uh, vitamins and even some canned dog food that we're gonna put in there to make it even more tasty for them. The cooker runs off of this heat fuel right here. Amelia's just adding some canned dog food as a little treat. The dogs always eat really well when they get a little extra treat. They got some salmon as soon as we got here and they gobbled that up. So I think they'll all be eating well tonight. All right, so the snow has turned to water. Okay, so now we turn. dip some this out one. and we're gonna put some in the dog food bowls. Just like that. Dog care is our priority, so we want to make sure that we feed the dogs before we feed ourselves, make sure that they have everything that they need, and then we can worry about our own dinner. All right, so on the menu tonight we have chili, which is not actually hot dogs, even though it looks like hot dogs, and brownies. And the way that we do this is we take the frozen chili and we just drop it in the pot of warm water, and then the chili will turn into warm chili. So they're vacuum sealed in these little baggies, and we just put them in there like this. So. Can I, be I, some hope they don't get, I hope they don't get wet. All right, this is our vacuum packed brownies. We just heat it up. So we're gonna have warm brownies. Amelia, you can go out and grab one. Aha. You can go grab one, Rosalie. Ooh, so good. Right. Mm. Delicious. Are they good? Mm -hmm. mm. Warm brownies? Scrumptious. I am drinking my tea peacefully, admiring the view in the background because it's beautiful out here. Dad's stoking the fire. It's an inside tent fire. And here's a tent that we're borrowing. It's huge. And it 
even has a stove. It's pretty amazing. In here, you can open that little window to get some air. This is good. Door open. Stand by the fire. Pretty nice view. It's about 10.30 and we've got the wood stove going in the tent. It's nice and warm in there. After a cozy night, it's time to wake up and melt some snow, make the dogs their breakfast, and have breakfast ourselves. Cobalt is watching over the breakfast. Make sure nothing happens to it. for breakfast. We're having breakfast sandwiches. I declare the most biggest CP falling in the world. We're packing up camp and we're gonna head out pretty soon. when we're going down really steep hills we let some of the dogs loose and we even wrap a rope around our runners to slow us down even more. Here Rosalie is demonstrating how it's important to never let go of your sled and if you fall off the horse get right back on. It's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out your door. You step onto the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. J.R.R. Tolkien. We did have some wind going up over the pass the second day, and we saw plenty of bear tracks. Luckily, we survived the perilous mountains, but just like every good adventure, 
it must come to an end. Yeah, we saw the road, right? So we're almost back to the road here. We can see a few cars driving on it. And we've got a few more miles to go to get back to the truck and uh, river crossing. Um, here come Keen and Rosalie here. Once we get back to the truck, we'll load up the dogs and we'll be on our way home and everyone's gonna sleep really well tonight. Guarantee that. Hey guys! trip and it's crazy to be back to the road. Kind of wish we could camp out again tonight. Did you have fun Rosie? Yeah. Awesome. All right thanks for joining us. One of my favorite quotes that I really try to live by is something Annie Dillard said. How we spend our days is of course how we spend our lives. And I might not have a ton of free time as a dog musher, but each day working with my dogs, my heart is full. All right, everything is loaded and we are gonna head home now. We sure had fun but there's no place like Gnome. Well, we've got the kitchen sink. No, not literally. Um, so we're going to teach the girls what camping by snow machine is like. Should be lots of fun. It will be lots of fun. I can't wait. How many dogs are we bringing? Sink, actually, I'm not sure if I brought one. How many dogs are we bringing? Um, well, we have 11 and we brought nine. And the snow machine and two sleds? Yep. We're going to go out in the mountains? We are. All right. Should be fun. fun. Did you bring the kitchen sink? No, I didn't. No, I wanted to wash my hands. Oh, bummer. Have to use moss and snow. Oh, gross. What you doing? You're not filming again, are you? <laughs> okay. What you doing? You're not filming again, are you? <laughs> How many times do you get warm brownies while you're camping, huh? Um, Can I see a brownie? Actually, a lot of times. Because we make brownies a lot. No, seriously, hang on. Just hear me out, okay? Because wait, there's multiple ways to make brownies when you're camping. There's this method, freezer packed brownies. But then, you can also bring the brownie dough and oranges. Scoop out the oranges and put the brownie in there and then bake them in the fire. That was chocolate cake. A little chocolate cake, brownie, same thing. Or, if you are um, if you have like a, a pan, you can even like bake brownies in a pan over like coals and stuff. You put coals on the top. We've done that before too. So there are lots of ways to make brownies when you're camping. You do not need to live without luxury when you're camping. Believe it or not, you can have brownies if you want them. Rosalie and Keen are making some hot tea to have before breakfast. We're gonna have some breakfast sandwiches that we made. Ah, spill the tank all over myself. Keen's spilling the tank all over himself. No. Mm -hmm. Time to make the dogs their breakfast. This is disastrous. Good morning, puppies. Yeah. I'm about to for sure. Line out, line out. Whoa, whoa, Lines. 
is a fun thing to do while we have lunch.